Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Force here, and today we will be checking out Rogue Legacy. This is a 2D side-scrolling, procedurally generated rogue-like game. Or rather, as the developer Cellardor Games calls it, it's a rogue light. Uh, so like other rogue games, this is a very punishing 2D, uh, 2D game where you're supposed to be moving throughout a castle and uh, trying to defeat bosses and enemies and find secret treasures and things of that nature. However, unlike other games, it's not quite as punishing in the sense that when you die, while you do have to start over from the beginning, uh, you carry over any gear and upgrades that you've acquired. Uh, now there's a in-game reason for this, and basically what's happening is it's not your character who's coming back per se, uh, but rather your children who are succeeding you. So every time you die, uh, your chi you, you come back as one of your three children. and. Again, you carry over your gear and upgrades, uh, although your character will be slightly different because you're not the same person and there's different classes and different traits that you can have and all sorts of stuff like that. So here in this video, I'll be showing you some gameplay here in Rogue Legacy, uh, as well as giving you my initial thoughts and impressions on the game. Uh, before we go into the character classes and, and the children who take over once you die, uh, we'll see all that stuff when I inevitably die. Uh, but until then, why don't- oh my lord, this is looks like a difficult room. Uh, until then, why don't we just go ahead and talk about the gameplay. I'm getting hit a lot, which is not good at all. Alright, so uh, I am playing this with a controller, a 360 controller, plugged into the PC with that USB connector. And um, it, this appears to be the primary way to play. It's actually the way that the developer suggests playing the game, so that's why I decided to uh, use the controller instead of a mouse and keyboard. Although I would fully imagine that a mouse and keyboard would still work if uh, that's your preferred play style. Uh, up until recently, that's how I pretty much played everything, but... I kind of converted into trying this out and uh, realized, hey, this can actually be pretty good. I can't do any damage to this guy. I've never encountered something like that. I've been pl playing this game for a couple of hours, and I haven't seen a uh, undamageable guy yet, but there is one. I have seen plenty of those, though, attacking pictures. Those are horrendous. Uh, so you'll notice I'm moving from room to room, and we're just taking out all sorts of different enemies. There's melee enemies that throw bones. There's melee enemies that uh, have weapons and um, just normal melee weapons. And then we've got, like, ranged caster type enemies and floating ghost and enemy pictures and fun stuff like that but yeah just you know standard movement we've got a basic attack here um and then there's also a special ability now depending on which class that you get uh, you're gonna have a access to a different ability my particular ability right here is this throwing axe and i can show you that uh let me try to get a little bit closer here so these items i've basically got to do a downward attack to activate that standing platform so i've got this throwing axe and let me uh i'll just do that so it basically just goes in an arc it's going to use up some mana if you take a look at the upper left hand corner a few things worth noting we've got my current level um, which is again something that carries over from character to character and then we also have my health and mana bars represented the amount of gold that i've acquired so far in this run um, and then my special abilities of which right now i just have that one throwing axe Okay, now I've also got a few upgrades to my character. I've got the ability to double jump and dash, which is something you don't start the game off with, uh, but you do acquire um, through a, a mystic trainer, essentially. And so I've got the ability to do a double jump, and then I've got this left and right dash that I can do as well. And actually, yes, this is where we just came through. Uh, so the goal is to just move through the levels, collecting gold, and then when you die, you can use that gold for upgrades and gear, and to get actually access to those upgrades and gear, uh, there's like a skill tree, but there's also additional upgrades that you can get by finding these uh, little like runestone things that you give to your mystic, or you can get your gear by finding uh, blacksmith plans for your blacksmith. Okay, let's go ahead and open this chest, try to avoid these spikes here. There we go and attack these glowing eyes. Um, so yeah, this has proved to be quite difficult. I actually haven't made it past the first area yet. Uh, the game does have four areas. Now, technically, I could be moving past the first area, but I've been trying to... Com I've been trying to complete it, like access all the rooms and um, and then complete the final boss. And in the past two hours I've been playing this, I haven't fully completed the first area, even though I've had the option to just leave and go to the additional additional three areas a total of four of them um i just haven't done that so 
trying to get this thing. There we go. Wonderful. I, I found that this game got a little bit easier once I unlocked the abilities to double jump and dash. So it definitely seems like once you once you start to get these abilities, and I'm sure there's more in the future that I don't have yet, uh, it's going to make the playthrough just a tad bit easier. This is a dangerous... Okay. Let's try to... Oh no! Oh no. That's a bummer. And I want to try to get that because... Just because I, I could use that gold, you know? I don't know why I'm waiting so long. Oh, because... <laughs> because I fail, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> oh, man. So, obviously, as you can see, it's a uh, an old-school-inspired art style. It definitely a very retro-looking feel to it. Uh, not a modern type of gra graphics, but again, it's also harkening back to other roguelikes. I'm gonna go take this way up. I don't want to risk getting hit by all that stuff. I don't think I'm... I don't think my timing and coordination is quite where it needs to be to properly get through that way, so we'll just go through this way and then pull ourselves across. Let's see what this is. Ah, uh, you know what? This is actually going to be leading up to the second area. So this first area here, now all these rooms that you're seeing, once again, this is a procedurally generated game. So every single time you die and you come back, the layout of these rooms, the enemies within them, everything about it will be completely randomized. But I know that I'm about to go into a second area just because of this particular uh, waypoint basically is what this is, which allows me to go from one to the other. There was one at the start of the castle and then we've got this one here. Once I come up to one of these and you see one exit, it pretty much means you're about to go up to uh, the next potential area um, so I guess we could just go up there briefly just to show you so here we go we're in the we're currently in Castle Hamson and this next area here is the Maya I could show you this briefly I don't really want to be here because uh, everything in here is, you can see level 35 is that door and I'm currently level 30 so um, even though I can like technically do this and I might do all right um, definitely not preferred that I be here I rather go somewhere that I either out level or that I'm the proper level and that's another guy right there that I can't even attack that's a real bummer we got a freaking portrait so let's go back to the first castle area um, oh man these things if I don't die before then go back to the first castle area see if I can show you a little bit more of that and hopefully uh, we might even It'd be nice if we could get to the boss fight. So we're going to take the waypoint back to the beginning, and then we're just going to go from there throughout the rest of this castle. That will be the game plan. I'm actually honestly quite surprised that I haven't died yet. Um, the particular class that I'm playing right now has a high HP pool. Um, there's there's ones that are... There's mages, which replenish mana when you get kills. There are uh, things like barbarians and paladins. Paladins have the ability to block. I think I'm a barbarian right now, and I've got a shout that I can actually show you that I haven't yet. Um, let's do that. Oop. Nope. Let's do that now. I'll do the shout. It's a Fusro Da shout, and it just basically shouts all around me. I can't damage that guy either. Oh, you know what? You know what it is? Um... I, I remember, th this is why I've never seen that before. I'm like, I've been playing this for two hours and I've gone through pretty much this entire first area. Why have I not seen those? Uh, it's because my character has a, a side attribute. Sometimes they're positive, sometimes they're negative. One of my character's attributes is that he's insane. So I think those might be hallucinations, um, the things that I can't attack. I'm pretty sure that that might be the case. And a little bonus room. Uh, so sometimes you'll come across a bonus room with, um, it can be different things, it can be like a mini boss fight. This one is a little mini game in which I have to, I've got five axes to try to destroy as many targets as possible. Okay, so we move over here, and with five axes I've got to try to destroy the maximum number of targets. Okay. Right, I'm supposed to leave a ten or less standing, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. One last axe. Is that not, that's not 10 or less, is it? Oh, man, so close. Um, so had I gotten 10 or less, I would have gotten a great prize, but I didn't. So I didn't get a prize. <laughs> Plain and simple. Oh, he's a, he's a hallucination too. I wonder if he can... I bet you he can still do me damage because, you know, games love to screw you like that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he can. 
defeat all enemies. I can't do that. Um, so I've come across these certain types of areas where I... I guess I could technically if I use this throwing axe and kill him with it. Oh, I don't have any mana. So this is a fairy chest room, and every time you come in one of these rooms, again, it's tiled like other roguelikes, like a Metroidvania style. It's all tiled off, and again, these rooms are randomized. Um, and you can see the legend on the right-hand side. So this boss location, chest locations, fairy chest, open chest, teleporter, and the bonus room, like the one I just showed you. In these fairy chest rooms, there'll be an objective like defeat all the enemies, get to the chest within X amount of times, don't get hit, and if you meet the objective, you can open the chest, and it's usually like a lot of gold or sometimes uh, blueprints or something like that. Um, but I can't get that because I can't hit that guy right now. I don't have the ability. I Technically, I, I could with my throwing axe, I believe, but again, I have no mana right now, so I would have to get some mana before I could do that. And this is going to be another thing moving to another area outside of the castle. See, so this one is the Land of Darkness. And I think these guys are like level 50, so definitely I do not want to go there right now. So let's keep going right. And here is the other room. So that means there's only a couple of possible spots there for the boss room. You can notice the other other intersections there, those blue doors that I haven't discovered yet. So let's go ahead and go there. But I, we've technically seen all four area types now. Don't think that means it's super easy though. This game's, uh, it's been quite difficult, like I said. I've already been playing it for a few hours and I haven't even really left the castle. Again, I've seen those other areas. I know what they are, I know they exist, um, but I haven't actually gone through to complete them. Oh my lord. I hit, I hit the trigger to try to attack, but that's not the attack. And I knew that, so I don't know why I hit it. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get that guy. Um, so besides the double jump and all that right now, I also have that downward slash, um, which you use to knock open. Oh, ooh, look at this enemy. He's interesting. This is a bad spot for me though. Oh, he's a hallucination. Again though, I bet he can hurt me. No, he can't. Okay, well, now I, now I know at least. The hallucinations that aren't real, they can't hurt me. Good knowledge to have. And we got a chest right there, which I'm not going to be able to access. And I think this is going to be leading out to the forest again, yeah. So the boss room. Okay, there's only a couple more spots. We might actually get to see the boss fight. Although I've got like no health, so it'll probably be just a quick death. Floating pictures, I hate these. Both of them hate Hope this chest gives me some health here. Nope, tons of gold though, and I, I'm actually racking up the gold, so once I die, which again, trust me, it'll happen, uh, once I die, we'll be able to take a look at the lineage, get a bunch of upgrades, and I'll spend some time showing you that system. I guess this has been great so far though, because you guys have gotten a really good look at uh, the gameplay. At least the uh, earlier gameplay within this first of four areas. All right, here we go. Got a few branching paths here. Let's check the right one. Ah, bonus room. Nice, nice. HP and mana recovery, very nice. And this is the boss fight. All right, guys, so we're gonna open up these chests here. And then it will be time to go into the boss fight. Oh, I'm nervous, I think I'm gonna die. I pretty much died every time. It's a giant eyeball. Conceptually, he should be pretty easy, but uh, in reality, I'm not just I'm just not very good at it. Okay, there we go. Oh, why are there daggers down there? No, I'm just I'm so bad at these types of games. You guys, if you couldn't tell, you have no idea. Nope. Oh, we're so... No, the spikes. I forgot about the spikes. <laughs> that was a pitiful display. Trust me, I know. Uh, so when you die, you'll see all the enemies that you've killed. You also get a little... Uh, Sir Skunky has been slain by a spike trap. Fairy chest. Hold all the runes in the game. Runes. Okay, that's just a tip. But yeah, you see how I die, and then you see the number of enemies that I've killed. Okay. So, I've died... 
50 times maybe. I mean, it's, it's expected that she'll die, but it's fine. You do start over at the beginning of the castle. It's a new randomly generated layout every single time. But you can see here, you can go back and trace your lineage to every one of your deaths. So there's all different types of characters. There's different classes. This game actually has, I believe it's nine classes total. And besides the different classes have different abilities and innate traits, um, there's also, you, you'll get a randomized set of traits every time. So once you die, you get to choose from one of your three children to succeed you. And it'll be, it'll be a random class and random traits. And sometimes you get positive traits and sometimes you get negative traits. Now you can see there's the names plus their succession. So this is Lady Faye, the Lady Faye the fourth. So that means there's already been three, I've already played as three Lady Faye's. Lady Teresa the third and Sir Grey the third. Now there's the different classes right now. We can see that we've got access to three of the nine in this particular time. Sometimes I'll get like two paladins or two, bar two barbarians. I'll get a shinobi and two mages. Sometimes I'll get three mages. It's randomized. Um, so right now the classes that I've got a choice of are the shinobi, the mage, and the knave. The shinobi is a fast hero with massive damage but cannot crit. The mage is a powerful spellcaster. Whenever you get a kill, you replenish mana. And the knave is a risky hero with low stats but can land devastating critical strikes. I think out of these three, I'd like to do the shinobi. But let's take a look at the traits. So his traits are he's stereo blind, can't see in 3D. That's going to affect visually how the game looks. Uh, he's also got the dwarfism trait, which means... You can't go on roller coasters. What it means in game though, is that you don't set off those foot traps, those spike traps. Uh, dwarfism actually has a positive benefit. And then the spell that I've got access to is the ability to freeze uh, all enemies on screen, a time stop. So the uh, Lady Teresa the Third, besides being a mage, she's got the vertigo trait, which means you're upside down. Uh, you also have the trait of hyper, <laughs> your permaroided attacks knock enemies further. Hypergonadism? gonadism uh, so yeah you you when you hit enemies they get knocked back further her spell is the throwing axe and then sir gray the third besides being a knave he's got the servant trait which means very talented with very few issues savant servant the savant traits for very few issues i don't know what that means in game I, i've never seen that before in terms of a trait and his spell is the scythe so i think i'd like to try lady faye the fourth i think that this is a good one i like time stop a lot and uh dwarfism is also really nice i wonder what the stereo blind is going to be though so we're going to choose that so this is our new hero now once you're done that you're going to be brought up to the skill tree so these are the skills that i've unlocked so far we've got things like increased health increased carrying capacity for your equipment uh, increased damage increased crit chance increased crit damage uh, also in this screen as you progress you'll unlock um, different NPCs, like I've unlocked the blacksmith as well as the enchantress and the architect. The blacksmith is where you are going to upgrade gear. Enchantress is where you get uh, magical runes and powers. And the architect is where you can actually lock the level so that it stays the same. So this actually takes away the procedurally generated aspect of the rooms. It will lock them in place, but at the cost of you losing 70% of your gold. So you can decide, I wanna lock the level in place so that I know where every room is from the last time that I did it, but I will, I will get only 30% of the gold that I would otherwise. Uh, you can also upgrade your classes. So I've got the upgrade to the knight, which uh, makes it so that he's got a, a shield to block incoming damage. It turns him into a paladin. I've got the upgrade for the barbarian, which gave me that shout that you saw me use in the last run. And I also, in this tree, was able to unlock the shinobi, which I didn't start off with him as a playable character. So as I continue to spend points in these various things in these skill trees, we're going to get access to more and more things. And in fact, I guess I could probably just show you uh, I'll upgrade the mage and we're going to see likely it should be the case that once I spend a point in the mage we're going to see more things become available even though um, maybe there's a better thing that I could spend a point in something that's actually useful for me let's try down here crit damage I'll spend one point okay nothing all right let's try this one oh, some it sometimes it adds more sometimes it doesn't let's try the haggle okay there we go no there we go. Okay, good. So uh, the haggle makes it so that when I try to go back into the castle, typically um, death takes all of your gold, 
but it looks like I got to keep some of that in successive runs. Now, so the idea is before you, I got this upgrade, I would lose my gold every single time I went back into the castle. So I would try to spend it all. And I'm still gonna try to spend it all because it doesn't look like I get to keep all of it. It looks like I only get to keep 6% of it. Um, so I'm still gonna try to spend as much of the gold as possible. So you can see here, I could purchase an upgrade to the Shinobi, which will turn Shinobi into a hawk. I don't even know what that means. He'll gain a new ability or, you know, something like that. And then I can also get, what is this one over here? Oh, I can't, I can't. Oh, there it is. Unlock Lich. So I could get a new character class basically uh, for 11,000, but I don't have that right now. I've got 990. I've got enough to increase my health. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So there's all of my gold spent. Um, so yeah, again, you'll continue to get more and more things, unlock more classes, and get more various upgrades as you progress through the skill tree. So now that we've spent our gold, uh, we're gonna be back to this area. Here's my character. Pretty low health, only 162. I think the one that you just saw me playing with had like 300 something. Uh, so we've got the blacksmith, the enchantress, and the architect. So the architect, again, I can lock the castle in place, but at a cost of 70% gold. Or, oh no, I get only 70% gold, okay. So it's not as bad, you only lose 30%, but still you lose some gold, so. Oh, look at it, this is the, the lack of 3D. Notice my character like flips around now, that's funny. Uh, so the blacksmith, you get blueprints for various gear pieces. Um, I've got a gear piece in every slot equipped, I believe. Yep, I've got a cape, boots, chest, helm, and sword, and um, I've unlocked different swords, so there's a blood sword, which would give me vampirism. The one that I have right now, though, uh, does more damage, so I'm just going with that. Um, this helm here gives me uh, gives me increased health and mana. I could get a helm that would give me less health, but a lot more mana if I wanted to, uh, plus vampirism as well with that health. I've got a squire chest or a blood chest, which would give me vampirism at the cost of stats. So I've got some vampirism items I could potentially use, but uh, this one though, the squire limbs versus the knight limbs. The knight limbs give me more mana and it also weighs more. So this is just a straight up upgrade basically, but I don't have enough gold to do it, so I'm not going to. Plus it, it weighs more, so uh, you've always got to keep, it, keep in mind your capacity. And then we've got the capes here, uh, critical chance, critical damage, and vampirism. Okay, so that's the gear. And then finally here with the enchantress, this is where you get upgrades such as the, ooh, the, the, the time stop, that's pretty awesome. Um, this is where you get upgrades like the Sprint rune, which is the dash. Uh, I could also add vampirism. You basically can put upgrades on each one of your items, your sword, your helm, your chest, piece, your, your boots, and your cape. Um, so, so right now I've got the sprint rune attached to the sword because I think sprint's like super awesome and necessary almost. Um, attached to my helm, I've got the vault rune, which lets me double jump. I could also get uh, retaliation, which is like a thorns. Uh, I don't have any runes available for my chest or for the boots. The cape rune that I have is the thorns. I could instead of having say so i could do the vault on this instead of on this for example and i think you can stack these to get double the effect so if i get two vault it says right here multiple rune stacks allow for multiple jumps so basically if i had a vault here and a vault here i maybe would be able to do uh, a triple jump instead of a double jump okay whoo so so that is all that stuff now we're going to go back in the castle as a result we will lose 94 percent of the money so you can see because i purchased that upgrade it's, before that it was 100 percent, but now it's just 94 and here we are once again at the very beginning the castle has been reset and it is now randomized so this next room isn't going to look the same this is not how the room looked last time and then we can go up here oh man I've got a much smaller hitbox with dwarfism as well. That's actually uh, not preferred, but I, I got crazy damage, so I'm one-hitting everyone. I quickly want to show you, too, I was talking about the four areas. So again, I've been exploring the castle through my entire playthrough, and then you can see tower, forest, and dungeon on that little map right there. And that's respectively where they are. You go you go south, you get the dungeon. You go to the east, you get the forest. You go north, you get the tower. That's basically how the layout works. And I think that's pretty much everything. I mean, unless you wanted to sit here and watch me fail until I get to the boss to fail again. I bet I could probably kill him now if I was paying attention. And not chatting with friends on YouTube. You guys. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's going to do it, guys. Uh, once again, this has been forced checking out rogue legacy 
It's a pretty cool game. I like it. I've been having fun with it. Uh, this is not my standard type of game, like roguelikes. Not what I typically play, but this is kind of cool. I like the lineage thing, and I like just the craziness, because every time I've done a new playthrough, I've played um, a completely different character. Sure, I've been repeating the, the, the basic classes, but uh, with the randomized traits such as dwarfism or huge or you can you can get nearsighted and farsighted which will actually affect your vision on the game um, i think all these things add for a lot of replayability and uh, this is a pretty fun little title so if you're interested and you like what you've seen so far you can pick up this game right now it's available for 14.99 once again, this is Rogue Legacy, or once again, this has been Force checking out Rogue Legacy, the 2D side-scrolling procedurally generated Rogue Light game from Cellar Door Games, available now. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe, and as always, keep watching and keep owning. Alright, I, I got this. I don't even know what I got here, but I got it.